Right, let's type a question. Showing that a vector field is in fact conservative, expressing it as a potential function and then evaluating it over a certain path between two points. First part of it would be show that this vector field is conservative. Well, the grad of any scalar field will produce a vector field. However, not every vector field comes from the grad of a scalar field. But you know that if you take the curl of the grad of a scalar field, that should equal zero. Which means if you take the curl of a vector field and it equals zeros, that means that the vector field will be expressed as the grad of a scalar field, which would then be called the potential for that. So the first part would be to show that this vector here, the curl of this vector, is going to equal zero. Right, need a bit of space for this, so I'm going curl F. I, J, is that going to be enough space? Because I don't know why I put so many terms in this. Using the vector differential operator, del or nabla, if you will. And then the components of the vector, 2xy plus z squared plus y. A couple of room there. x squared plus 2yz plus x. I took up room as well. Look at this is shorter. y squared plus 2xz. It's required to show that if we work out this determinant, the result will be 0, 0, 0. Well, what have we got? i, j, k. So, for the i component, I've got the partial of y of this, and the partial of y of that will be 2y. Take away the partial of z of this, the only terms involved in z is that, minus 2y. That's okay. Middle one for j, the minor is going to be this. The partial of that with respect to x is just 2z. The partial of this with respect to z, only this term here, is 2z. So far, so good. And for the last one for k. The partial of this with respect to x, now there's two parts, there's not much left more room, there's a 2x plus 1, take away, and then the partial of this with respect to y, have to put it underneath, another 2x plus 1, which means it equals 0, 0, 0, which means that f is conservative and can be expressed as the grad of some scalar field, which we'll call the potential of that. Right, back up to the top, second part. Now, if the grad of that potential is equal to f, then each of the components must be the same. So that means partial phi by partial x, partial phi by partial y, and partial phi by partial z should in fact equal these three parts. 2xy plus z squared plus y, x squared plus 2yz plus x, have to go underneath, y squared plus 2xz. So from that, you get three equations. Partial phi by partial x must equal 2xy plus z squared. Partial phi by partial y should equal <coughs> x squared plus 2yz plus x, that's another equation, and partial phi by partial z should equal that last thing, y squared plus 2xz, call that 3. I'll need to refer to that again, I'll need to rub out this space, so I'll just pause for a second. <coughs> right, having copied that down, we've got this, d phi by dx equals 2xy plus z squared plus y. Right, integrating that up with respect to x, so that means keeping the y and the z constant. Integrating this up, 2xy plus z squared plus y dx will give me, that'll go back up to x squared y, that'll be z squared times x, that'll be y times x, plus some unknown constant not involving x, so some function of y and z. 
differentiating that with respect to y should give me my next equation. So using 2 now. So differentiating that with respect to y would give me x squared plus x plus the derivative of that with respect to y. And that should equal this expression. So that should equal x squared plus 2yz plus x. Well, those terms are the same there. So that means that partial a by partial y should be 2yz. Same again, you can integrate that up. So a would be the integral, with z being constant, of 2yz dy. And the derivative of that is going to go back up to y squared z plus some constant, call that b of z. So I'll go back <coughs> and write out the original function, this thing across here. So phi was x squared y plus zx squared plus yx plus y squared z plus some unknown function b of z. Now I can go to the third one. If you differentiate that with respect to z, I should end up with this expression. So partial phi by partial z would be, now involving z I've only got this term here, that's a 2zx, and this term here, that's a y squared, plus the derivative of b with respect to z, it's the only variable that's left in there now, and that should equal y squared plus 2xz. Well these terms all cancel out, meaning that db by dz must equal 0. So that means that b must be the integral of 0 dz, which is just a constant. Finally, give me the function. So the function is going to be, back to my original one here, x squared y plus z squared x plus yx plus y squared z plus some constant, but letting c equal 0, since it's just find any particular potential for it, then c equals to 0 means this will do. So it is. There's my potential function. I suppose you should take a note of that. Right, now the last part. Last part is hence evaluate this. Hence evaluate f dr from there to there. Well, the thing about this is this. If f is in fact the grad of some function then, that means that the integral of that will just be the integral of this thing potential function will simply equal phi itself from wherever you start to wherever you finish. If you've got a conservative field then you've got path independence. So this last part then along their great circle over the surface of the sphere blah 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 was just a ruse. All that matters is where do you start and where do you stop. So the evaluation of that integral will just be of this thing here x squared y plus z squared x plus y x plus y squared z going from the two points 1, 2, negative 1 to 2, negative 1, 1 which is just going to be a mass of arithmetic of course so that you're going to have for the first one so starting with this one at the top here that's going to be I've got 2 squared times negative 1 plus 1 squared times 2 plus 2 plus negative 1 times 2 plus the last one negative 1 squared times 1 oh, minus I'll put that underneath minus same again for this one now working out to this one I've got 1 squared times 2 plus negative 1 squared times 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 2 squared times negative 1. So the final answer for that is going to be I've got a negative 4 plus a 2 minus a 2 plus a 1. So that's just going to come to negative 3. For this part I've got a 2 plus a 1 plus a 2 minus a 4, so that's just going to come to 1, so minus 1. Final answer, negative 4.